What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Juventus Football Manager 2022 Rebuilding Series. Leave a thumbs up if you've been enjoying it. But yep, we're the January, we're at the January update time right now and I don't even know how to explain this. You guys see it how no draws, both us and Milan, it's been a battle. It's been like a side part to this series, not just, you know, trying to win the league, go in the Champions League, but yeah, focus on the league for a second. It's been almost like a mini battle between us and Milan. Obviously, uh, we won last year, they won the year before, and they were competitive last year with us as well. It's been really interesting, hasn't it been? But I, th I find it so interesting. Both 15 wins and one loss. Uh, we have the same point, sure, but it's just, it's incredible. Now, remember when they conceded a very limited amount of goals? Um, and it's nothing outstanding this year. It's not, I remember when I did, it was 14 games, wasn't it, last time I showed you? I can't remember the exact number, to be honest, but I remember they conceded two goals. Yeah, it could have been that point. I just wonder because we've played 16 at this point now. But anyway, there's no outstanding for and against. I mean, we've scored 49 in 16. That's not bad. Just over the average of three goals a game. Let's throw, let's just go to our results and you will see that. We've just, we haven't won every single game, mind you, but uh, obviously 7 0 in the Champions League, that doesn't even count. So keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, we've just, especially most recently, uh, December was, I say, a great month. There was four games, so there's been other months. September. Yeah. What a start to the season. And that 16-0 in our first friendly, I think that really kicked thing. When do you see that? Like, even if it's a friendly. Wow, yeah? Wow. Right? <laughs> that was pre-season, so that's why Kian, that's, yeah, in control by the assistant. So shout out to the assistant, I guess, but... It had to go back to that because that was insane. But getting to more on recent times, how we went in the Champions League, it in comparison, it wasn't as good. We finished second. We we dropped points in two of the games, uh, but our opponents, our easiest opponents, Donovan Kiev and Celtic, uh, where we did, let's see where we did drop the points here. As you see, Celtic, like... It, sometimes we just have these easy wins. It was Arsenal, but we did get a sending off with Cardrado and they scored twice after that. We scored the first goal, so it could have been a game where we at least didn't lose in it. And funnily, the first game, or like the first drop points we had was against Celtic. And that's pretty disappointing as well. But we ha we actually had that equaliser by Adeyemi, so he's playing an important role. But uh, even if that was that turned out to be a loss, we still would have made it. But yeah, I don't think it was our best group stage. But you know, us and Arsenal advance. We had very very close campaigns, didn't we? So yeah, tricky to go down or be second. But you can see the goal difference. But it was results between teams. Arsenal, you see, they beat us three one, and we beat them two one. So yeah, and that makes up the goal difference. But anyway, they beat Celtic nine nil. So it's not just me. Like I reckon there's a lot of goals being scored. Will it be the latest update? Because it's not just my team. <laughs> oh, you see, even Arsenal doing it. But anyway. But would you look at this? Moyes Cairn has actually been our top goal scorer at 21 goals. We were, we were wanting a bit more from him this season. So if we go over to his form, you can see that he we were... We'll be mixing and matching the advance forward and pressing forward. We go back to that right now. Um, you, look at all the connections between... I feel like there's so many between Ken and Adeyemi, but then it's linking with Foden as well. So that's just a dangerous mix. And yeah, sometimes, we, as I said, we mix it up. But he just went, regardless, doesn't matter which role, he went on a mad run of scoring goals. Like, he had two hat-tricks in a row. He just flying... That's why we talk about Adeyemi a lot, who's had, what, a solid season, but in comparison, like, he's he's got five player of the matches, so he's been he's been class himself. Two strikers absolutely killing it. He may not get to the heights he did last season. Maybe Kian wants to try and do that, but we're not individually focusing on that uh, too much, but that's still a great record and just shows you where we are uh, really at and, like, our stats we showed in the league table uh, Great, great performances. So we got a game against Empoli, um, the next game up. 
We might take a look at some potential free transfers. Obviously, we got a bit extra in the budget now from you know the previous episode when we made all our transfers as we're heading into January. Now, it's a little bit of a budget. Uh, we'll check out if there's any available free transfers, but I feel like I don't want to... I'm probably not going to spend too much time on it. So what we will do, we go over to the contracts in six months because it's January. It's out of interest. I, uh, more intriguing. We want to sort by the highest value. You've got Eden Hazard at probably 32 years old. Little too old for mine, but you might just want to see how good he is, Eden Hazard. He's not looking too bad, but at 13 natural fitness, I probably won't go for a 32-year-old, but his attributes are still looking fairly strong, to be fair. There's quite a few names. Oh, remember when I mentioned Rafinha? See, I'm a lot in my mind about I'm so happy with my team right now. I think we can go all the way. We can do it this season. And you've got Griezmann, 32. It's it's really, really intriguing. Any high potentials here? Alessandro Coltro. Ooh, could be a good young Italian defender. You would expect him to be. But I just feel, yeah, he's... I may have, I'll, you know, I'll put him on the short list and see if anyone makes a move and how that all changes. Uh, but at this point in time, there's even a look, Wonder Kid. It's great to have this media description. So you could even sort that, but that's going to, we look how much players are showing here. But yeah, you can sort it so you can find all the Wonder Kids, which is pretty handy. Uh, this is one that we have already scouted, and he's a real player. So go search him in your save if you don't know him. Like he's a Norwegian, you might not know uh, much about him. I don't think his his name rung too much of a bell for me. But you go approach him, and again, I'm going to get some of these guys on the short list because I don't want this episode whole of just like offering contracts. But yeah, some of these guys, I I I might yeah I might put an offer in uh, for them. So there might be even a few more. Uh, a few more of these players. Even when they're listed as a promising winger, his potential doesn't look the highest, but sometimes promising winger can still be decent uh, depending the level of football you're playing at, at the same time. If you're at the very top, yeah, they're not going to be the level of wonder kids, but they can still become like re like first top division type players. So yeah, if we go back, there seems to be a lot of quality. And again, we'll sort by ability. These are, like, Rafinha really rings, like, yeah. I think someone of Rafinha's quality, uh, I said we won't, we'll do, do a single. We'll do a single contract. And we'll just declare, we can't take that off, so we have to put it in. Squad player, his estimated wage between 82 and 105K, so we're just going to go in with his contract. Seven mil, that's, you know, look, Man City, we it could just end up one that doesn't even get accepted so you got to really balance this because it's a mix of you you want to try and have a contract that gets accepted but you don't want to pay too much so yeah it's a tricky one chuck a team of the year in there assist bonus and yeah we'll see uh this probably will get accepted and we'll just bump that <laughs> Mix though. Sometimes you want to increase the agent's fee or the agent will be willing to accept. So, yeah, when his estimated cost is like 46 and a half million, when you get, if you, yeah, if we do get someone like him on a free transfer, there's, you could approach so much more. Even if older players, you can go Griezmann, you can go Hazard, you can get a depth of experience, Gundawan as well, just to show you how these guys actually look in case they've declined massively. So yeah, I do mention that natural fitness, but they could have that one, you know, good enough season left if you want to just take a different approach to building a Champions League winning squad, just build experience. So yeah, this season there looks to be quite, there's probably even more as well if you scroll down, scroll down, <laughs> there's like Carl Walker, Al, but there's, you could build a whole 11, I think. My mind is ticking. Experiment video is ticking. Let me know if you want to see that where I sign maybe over 30 players, like players that are over 30 years old on free transfer, just kind of, yeah, a different experiment. I'm actually thinking about that right now. Maybe let me know what team would be good to do it with because, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what team would suit that, uh, but it would be a team that's you know has a bit of uh, balance to be able to afford those guys, <laughs> but only, yeah, only signing those types. That's interesting. That's what I love about FM. You could just suddenly you get this interest to do something specifically, and yeah, there you go. That's 
That could be next, we'll see. But another situation has been with Chesney as well. He wants to explore his options at the end of the contract. So we've got guys like that. We could go to offer him a new deal, doesn't want to. But yeah, that's why I think we could go, you know, just strong as we can. Like we're doing it this season in the league, but in the Champions League, uh, yeah, you can see some names running out of contract. A lot of these guys older, we see how they come into the season. Same with Quadrado. Uh, you're like, oh, you should offer him a deal because he's been amazing. Uh, I'm just keeping my tabs on if other teams approach him. We can hold it off just as long as other teams are not approaching him for a contract. So, yeah, if you know, you get it. You get it. We don't need to explain more than that. Right now, he's not listening to offers from any other club. And even like with Danilo as well, uh, he's at 32 years old. We've been trying to get rid of him. So... The fact that no one has really come after him is a bit concerning for me. So we're probably going to take him off and, yeah, no value because we weren't really getting what we were wanting there. And if we were going to offer a contract to him, um, he would be he'd be willing to listen, yes? Yeah? He's not mad that we've been having him transfer listed. We're still using him in games and stuff. So, uh, yeah, as long as throughout this episode there's no offers, uh, yeah, we'll deal with that. We'll offer our own players. I think he and Quadrado will get contracts, the goalkeeper, both are goalkeepers as well. Like he got Perrin. He's a 31-year-old as well. But yeah, I don't really like his attributes. We don't use him too much anyway. And Benucci, I think, comes to the end of his contract. So uh, at his age, yeah, 36. So yeah, let's get into the game for this episode though. Like, yeah, look, that was, that's why I was almost holding off with Rafinha. We, look, Manchester City. Monaco, you know how much money they have. Well, don't forget, we're Juventus. We can't forget. But when you see those bigger clubs, not I don't even mean, I just mean big. I don't bigger than Juventus, but just b Man City and Monaco with their money. It's it's interesting where Rafinha goes. I think we question that with another player. Who would you like to go to uh, if you were Rafinha? Monaco could be. See, I, d I think I'm just saying my own personal thing as I'd like to be in France. It but Italy is great as well. And just the fact he's already been in England, so, you know. But, yeah, France is good. <laughs> I want to go France. But as I said, I, w I would love to go to Italy as well. They're both, you know, they've both got good places to go and people to see. That's for sure. <laughs> and, yeah, looks like there's been offers in uh, for this guy already, so... Yeah, Tottenham, Marseille. Oh, feels like we're just going through it again. Like, ready for a player to reject us. We'll pick another team. So this is by default what he wants. I don't know if we... There's every chance we might not end up using this guy, but as I said, that's going to get accepted for sure. Uh, but more so, if it's just a discovery... If you guys can find him and sign him in your save and be a good signing. So, yeah, as I said, if we go on to win the Champions League this season, which we're really going to strive for, uh, sometimes it'll be a fact. Even like these other couple guys, yeah, we're just letting, letting them have contracts. They're not first-team players. Uh, but, yeah, sometimes in my videos, I want to just show you guys maybe players you could find for your own saves, even if we're not necessarily going to need them ourselves. Or even if we, yeah, you know, finish things up by this season and they... They could have still helped us. And, okay, yeah, this guy might be a talent. I don't know. Is this... Yeah, we got to get a bid in, Coltro. That's what I mean. I wait and see if other teams making bids, and we're not surprised. So, once more, you're going to have to go beefy with this guy. And he's probably going to be worth it. What, increasing that by a bit? And he won't... You know, you, he's not even... You don't know if he's even going to get to these for us. So, we don't mind... Oh, you're, you're, like, you're doing a lot of clicking, mate. He better pick us. We only increased on what he wanted. Oh, gosh. If he doesn't, man, what would it take? <laughs> what would it take? Alessandro Sachi. Was he... Ooh. I felt like I want to see this guy just... Again, we may not even see him develop more, but if you were in this situation with someone who was a bit in between, I'd... I, he's still so young. I want to see him develop a bit more and you can maybe get something extra for him in terms of the amount of money you make. Uh, yeah, seems very young. AC Milan have a game coming up here. So we just continue. We'll eventually get through all these individual messages and see, this is what it's been us in Milan just doing this damage. So hopefully we can replicate that with our performance, but 
we want to we want to see are they still like yeah where's their formation what's their tactics looking like again uh, original football manager kind of uh, tactic there uh, <laughs> but hey it must suit their players Morata's come in and he scored 15 goals for the season so but it's been yeah it's been more than him let's see by average rating who's Giroud I mean minimal <sighs> Not bad. It's probably, yeah, like a super sub. There's multiple players getting the job done. Who's providing for them? Again, a pretty decent mixture. Not one player outstanding with the assists. Uh, Key passes. Florenzi. They've just... It looks like they've got a great mixture. There's not too much individual performances. You've just got your striker scoring your most goals, which is normal. But I wouldn't say he's killing it on our striker's level, where, yeah, he's really pushing a goal average per game. Yeah, if we see what ours is doing, look at Keane and Adeyemi. Yeah, yeah, mad. And even with the assists, we have Cordrado that's more outstanding. I mean, Ruggeri from his games he started. Yes, that's expected. I shouldn't be, like, surprised. Uh, key passes, because that's how we're set up tactically as well. Uh, it, I say Ruggeri, he still does a fair amount, but Cordrado is that wing back on attack. Yeah, we're going to be seeing more through him. But all right, Empoli... And this is a game we're re really expecting, expecting to have one of our strongest performances for the season. So maybe we'll get that on show for you guys. Uh, McKenney has been very strong, which has led to a new signing in Marco Verratti. We probably haven't used him as much as we would like and a couple games uh, put him in. Um, yeah, two goals, two assists, uh, but I feel a lot of strength. I feel a lot of strength coming in uh, through McKenney. Just he's, he's a very good player, very well-rounded. So uh, he's got a good role. Uh, I think four-star, where he's not even natural as a DM. Uh, he's natural in center mid, but he's still accomplished. Uh, fits that role really perfectly and balances uh, balances our team, playing that yeah the ball-winning role uh, in the deep midfield. And Delict, he did have a little bit of a sickness, but he's going to come back in. Inacio as well. See, he's been that, what, like 6.88 rating, not outstanding, but he hasn't seen as many performances. Like he started five times in the league. So we'll give him another start here in this, you know, it's, we see it as an easier game, but yeah, let's go. Maybe give you an update on Ruggeri so you guys can see just, he's having that steady, didn't I say? That's what he's probably going to get now, that steady progression. And yeah, we'll leave that message. But let's get into the game. It's the same with Kamavinga though, as well. I just want to touch on him. I, I told you in the last episode, there's going to be a battle. There's going to be a real battle for positions. And I think that's what... Oh, we're, yeah, Demiral could make the bench. Yeah, get into it now. And to be fair, I haven't worried. You know, I said I might add a few youth players into the first team because I said outside of the subs, we don't have extra players. But... We don't even need that many. Like the squad size, just for example, say when we're managing in the Premier League, you get seven on the bench. And then what? You have five or six left over? Like, so I think the squad size is normal. It's just, yeah, that's, we got to see it. This is how it should be. Basically, your whole squad should be, you have your 11 and then every single player maybe in into the subs. So yeah, I think our squad is a good size. Not something we need to worry about too much or at all, to be honest, where it's not even an issue. So yeah, we've been, we've been pretty impressed with how we go on this season. But at the same time, AC Milan, AC Milan is doing the same thing. So we can't afford to drop off. Let's go in there. Our Pedri clears. Adeyemi is going to fight for this. He just misses out. Romagnoli, Luperto, Parisi. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to say the names in a more Italian accent. Sorry if it's terrible. <laughs> Chesney, unless they're obviously not Italian. Ruggeri. <laughs> but anyway, let's see how we play it out of defense here. Inacio. Quadrado, this is pretty good though. McKenney's on an early yellow. We'll ease him off tackles, as you know we do. Kian, this is going to be just a sweet goal if it was going to be put home. But that was a really well created chance. Uh, yeah, yes, of course. We, that's annoying. I'm just going to gamble and not because uh, McKenney, just don't get sent off, please. <laughs> if anything, we'll just shout at him. Yeah, we'll, we'll shout. Calm down, on McKenney. Uh, maybe we'll just put stay on feet. We were not specifically saying get stuck in, but, you know, that's what, what we might do there. Come on, Pedri. Okay, 21 minutes. There's a corner. 
not the worst ball. Adeyemi. Ruggeri. Adeyemi. Belting. Wasn't that a belting strike? Hold on. Like, what? It's going to, obviously, this is going to be in slow-mo now. we already seen it. I reckon it's going to look normal <laughs> in replay. Replay form. Adeyemi got to Ruggeri. Look at that. Then he got it back to him. But, yeah, you could still tell the power in that. That was a perfect strike, without a doubt. Without a doubt in my mind. You just saw that. And McKenny, see, he's got that extra height. So defensively, he provides pretty well, especially from corners. Like He does that a lot uh, for the DM's position for defending corners. And where Verratti, he's a bit shorter, so doesn't win the same percentages. Or oh, Mane. Now, Delict. We're very good in the air. Those battles where, you know, it's up for grabs. Our player gets it. Now, Pedri. Pedri. Pedri, just keep going. The, oh, that's rare. Where, that, oh, you don't see him like that so much, but we're going to take it because it's going our way, that's for sure. But you don't see it come off the goalkeeper like that. Pedri, look, he was away. Away with... Uh, I love having our counters like this so we have a lot of players forward. This is, you know, set up in the formation. But yeah, you don't see it like that. Uh, Pedri, his strike was just too good. So yeah, 2-0. Uh, coming into this is what we were expecting. Dominance, Ruggeri, love his corners. And Inacio falls to him. All right, Pedri. Delict. Centre-backs combining outside the box now. Now, Ruggeri, cut in on your left, or at least get the cross in on your left to Adeyemi. And that could be... It didn't look like it was offside. To me, it didn't. But that's my opinion. But... Okay, just give me the replay. Give me the replay. Just in normal time, it looked like he was just behind someone, not in front of them. Like that guy there... Ah, I felt he was in line. Not not sure what you guys think, but it's not going to impact the result, you would think. But yeah, I felt like that was my normal reaction, like in open play, and I felt he was he was always in line with someone and not in front of him. But you know, with VAR these days, all it takes is one of your and like anything to be slightly <laughs> ahead. Ugh. But if they score directly after that, could it be? No, it's not going to be. I think that was very important for the rest of the game that we didn't concede from that. So we've had a pretty good first half. Let's chuck a praise in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're going to make it to half time. No other highlights. Just being pure dominance from us. Yeah, yeah. 2-0. Could have been 3-0, but we are pretty happy there. Uh, yeah, we've created loads of chances. Let's go. 2-0 is a very dangerous scoreline. As we were just saying, if they get that one more and make it 2-1, it makes you worry till the final whistle. Not that I am worried, but if they do, that could be something. So keep our minds on McKinney. Yeah, come on. Well done, Quadrado. Oh, ball over the top. This is what we were more convinced of, and he fin. It's disgusting how easily he finishes. Like, his finish, you see, he does it in so many ways, which I love. Like, that was a low, powerful drive. Last time, I think in the last episode, it was a chip, and he's he's had a mix of just deadly finishes. Both him and Kian, like, they're just good, man. <laughs> Quadrado to Foden. He just strengthens that midfield so much with Pedri. The creativity just never stops. Delict. The squad is really in a neat position now, isn't it? I was saying in pre... Oh, what a ball. Pressure, couldn't get it. Even last year, I said, no, nah, it doesn't... It didn't feel like we're Champions League winners. This season, our squad feels like it. That felt just slightly offside. Is it going to be the one that didn't look offside? That <laughs> wow, on the yeah, wow, in you know live play, I felt that one looked more offside than the other contextuous one. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to say too much, but that one wasn't even reviewed. 
Like, even, we'll take a look. Like, didn't that, did that look offside? I'm not going to complain, man. But, he was, yep, I'm just making sure I knew we were through 3 0, so it made it 4. But, like, disbelief. I thought that looked offside. I don't know. I don't know, man. Not complaining, but I'm just being honest. So you see, when we concede a goal, and if I get... If I conceded, if that was just a goal against, pretend that was a goal against to make you go down. Like, if you're losing the game. I would I would be raging a lot, and I want to have the same reaction. I don't want to be, like, seem... Ooh, you're just complaining about it. We just scored a goal, man. Like, it, and I'm feeling <laughs> like we didn't deserve it. Ugh. I felt we deserved that last goal, so maybe it was an equaliser. Equaliser. Freshen up some legs. Who's some... Yeah, Verratti. Oh, yeah, it's obvious to take McKinney off. See how it drops, even in his best rating? Uh, best role and rating, yeah. Uh, Danilo. Danilo for Quadrado, important player. So, yeah, we freshen that up. But, yeah, like I was really convinced that it wasn't offside. But what can you say? It's another goal, and we're not stopping here. We're not stopping here. Let's keep pounding him in. Adeyemi, 21st. He's fighting. I mentioned, do we feel like Adeyemi and Kian are really fighting to beat each other, or are they just having a great connection and th that's not really in their mind? Again, we you probably don't even know. All I know is they're banging in goals. Do you think it could be either one of those things? Like, do you think it is? Could it be potentially a thing they're trying to score more than the other? Or or is it just the fact we're, we've got a great team and the strikers are doing that? And it's, it's not even a thing that they're trying to outdo the other. You never know. You never know. Because he, he's got four today. He scored four on the day. Could he make it five? Adeyemi's gone for five. I see it, but I don't believe it. Adeyemi, this is a miracle on grass. He's got five. He scored five on the day. Adeyemi, 6 0. And he just does, his finishes are so convincing. He makes the goalkeeper look stupid. Like, like it was a penalty and he sent it him the wrong way. That's why he didn't move. That's what it looked like, man. Far out. Like, I, I sound like I'm mad about it, but I'm not mad. It's just like, it's it's more disbelief. Look, wow. He scored five. Adeyemi. Golly gosh. <laughs> Told you. I see it, but I don't believe it. But I at this point, we should be believing it. Another one might be coming. Foden. Someone else might want to get involved. But he's the target. Or we don't... Come on, guys. We want this to be a perfect game. I'll get it through. KN Adeyemi. No, he's going to get it. <laughs> it's 23rd. My pass reaction should have been for this one. I didn't think he would get another. But, well, look where it starts, though. Our attack gets praises, but our midfield, Pedri, he's not a ball-winning midfielder. He acted like one. It's 7-0. What? There was two ways about this. Like, you'd say, oh, you're easily going to win this one. We want to see more a challenging game. Or you can see this just brilliance. As I said, a miracle on grass from Adeyemi. What? How, nah. How's he got six goals? He scored six. Double hat-trick? No, nah, no, nah, it's just unbelievable. Double hat trick. He's stupid. Stupid. And stupid is meant in a good fashion. <laughs> like, wow. I can't, I don't, I know it sounds extreme, but I don't think I've ever, I, I probably have, but it's so rare. And in a competitive game, not in a friendly a double hat trick in a league game. Tell you what. 
I'll tell you what, Karim Adeyemi, and I I target him. I was saying like last year, like Liverpool always signed him FM twenty one. And 14 million, that was a steal. How, how, can you guys remember what happened? How did we get him for 14 million? He's like over, he should be, his value should be over 100 million or it will be at some point in his career. Like, how is this happening right now? Like, he's a killer striker. Like, he's quick. He's got the stamina. stamina. We're getting excited. Uh, he just goes all day. Strong on both feet. The mental off the ball, very important for his runs. And then the dribble, very important with the finish. And yeah. He's mad. Madness with the double, with the double hat trick. <sighs> Speechless. But the thing is, this is us just maintaining our lead with Milan. The goal difference is what's. The goal. Yeah, we needed something like that. Get a bit of breathing space. 7 0. I, I just. It has to be some form of message here. Like, oh, yeah, I knew he had to reach the goal bonus. Oh, no, he's only one away from it. He really boosted that, didn't he? He really, look at his stats now. He went from unders. He was under averaging a goal to game to three over it now. And he probably, <laughs> it looks like he was having a worse season and one game changed it. He was like, nah, I got I to gotta show, I got to show the gaffer that, yeah, 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 yeah. We're on again. We're on again. And even boost up his average rating a little bit. Pfft, killer. How good does that look? Amazing. Arteta? Is he? Yeah, of course, Arteta. Ah, uh, Mikel. You're not... Who? Nah, it's only Arsenal, so let's not have any worries. Yes, yeah, our run goes on. That was just... Yeah, clin clinical, classy, ruthless. Like, any of these words, man. Obviously, red in the wage budget. I just want to show you guys that if all of them accept, look, we'll just go down. So, you know, we're down to like 21 mil. We'll go down to 21 mil. That's all it took. Like, that's like a healthy budget. And that's if all the offers, like, yeah, all the contracts we offered join us, keep in mind. So, yeah, pretty healthy position. Uh, Adeyemi, uh, yeah, he's got the most goals now. He's taken, yeah, he's, he's rightful. <laughs> rightful over Kian. See, it feels like they're battling for it, but I don't think it's in a negative way. It's just we've been so good. But anyway, if you guys can leave a thumbs up. This was quite outstanding, this performance. I'm not going to lie. So I'll see you guys in the next one.